Hello everybody and welcome to another episode oh, of Mix Miles of the Mower Man. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. Today is, what day is it today? Uh, Thursday. No, not Thursday. Friday. No. Saturday. Saturday today. Uh, weekend, weekend off, no work tonight. Cool. Uh, Halloween's fast approaching, so by the time you see this video, we may have already done our Halloween video, we'd like to do a live trick or treating one. So I have to get the coffin out very soon, get the coffin service, maybe stick Nana in there, see if it still fits or whatever, yeah, see if it still works. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing, uh, come up soon. But today's video is going to be Astra Heater Blower Resistor Problem. Now, the other week I went up to go and see Mr. Martin Butler over at Retro Restore, Retro Hacks and Butler's Empire with his beautiful wife, oh. Sharon, and also went to go and see Gary, who um, runs the Project Man channel. Go and check them both out. They are fantastic and uh, very, very good dear friends of mine. So go and check them out. Um, I went up there to go to a funeral a little while ago, and on the way up, my, my heater um, was working, wasn't working, wouldn't turn on, turned itself off, work, would only work on, on number four, then would only work on number two, and it's just playing up on the way back, didn't work at all. And it was red hot, uh, absolutely red hot. <clears throat> so anyway, so that, that's the thought I got. Now my heater won't turn on full stop. So this video is going to be how to replace, test, <clears throat> take out uh, your heater blower and resistor on an Astra H, Astra G, uh, Opal, uh, Astra vehicle car. As long as the um, the heater blower is underneath the glove box or behind the glove box, even if you've got a different style car and it's there, this video will help you out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If it's your first time in watching Mixed Mother's and Merman, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Damn. That way you'll be told one done a video or two of them on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's get this heater blower out, tested, and get a new one put back in if required. Right, let's grab a cup of coffee. There she is. Yummy. And we'll, uh, we're busy decorating at the moment. The house is a bit of a, a bit of a thing. New door frames gone on and bits and pieces. So, right, here's a van. Let's, uh, let's get the coffee out. Cool. All right, all set up for what we need. Uh, on most Astra H's, G's and what have you, uh, the heater blower is located up inside here behind your glove box, okay, on most. So I've had a look around, as I say, Astra G, Astra H, Opals, they're pretty much all, um, all the same. They're all going to be mounted just below this, this glove box here. Hopefully you, you won't get too much glare. You're going to get a little bit, but I can't help the sun. The sun's where it is, so... Right, to remove your glove box, quite simple. Open the glove box up, get yourself a little tiny Torx bit. Um, you can use a screwdriver or on a, on a impact, and there's about five screws, I think. Get yourself a little Chinese tub as well, or something like that, just to put your screws in so you don't lose them. There's one there, there's one down here. And there's gonna be one top, top right-hand corner. Up there. And there's going to be one right down the bottom in here somewhere, down in here. So there's four screws there, one at each corner. I think that's it. And then literally this glove, the glove box will just pop out, see? Now when you um, take your glove box out, there's a little tiny light, light switch just on the back here. Just disconnect that, um, that plug like that, okay? And then your glove box will fall straight out and take it out. That's quite simple. Now, I need to get you right in so you can see what, what, what we're looking at. So let me bring you right in. I'll bring a light in as well, just so we get a bit of a, a better look at the situation going on. Let's bring a light in. Let's try that. Right, so I'm gonna use a, a screwdriver to show you where the, where the screws are on here, okay? Now, you, these are about a 5.5 mil, four mil. So you've got one screw just here at the end of my screwdriver. One screw here, or bolt here, yeah. You've also then got one right at the back just there where my screwdriver is now. And you've also got one right the way down here to do. And then over the deepest, deepest, darkest depths, you've got one 
right at the very, very back, uh, we're gonna move that next to that cable, it is just there. Okay, just there, that one to remove. And then right down on the bottom, you got one just there as well. Okay, so there you screw with one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got six of them to remove. Now, I will try and video it, but obviously you're gonna get right in the way. So I'm gonna put you right up here where there's a bit of a, a bit of sensible place to put you. But obviously you can get a bit of movement while I'm moving about and also you're not gonna be able to see everything because I'm uh, trying to get my hands in. So all you've got to do is simply slacken them off. They're not on there tight. Get a little tiny um, adjustable, a little tiny extension bar if you need it. And it's good to have a bit of nailing, uh, gnarling on it as well. That way once you get, get it running, you can just do it by hand. Okay. There's one. Put it in your little Chinese tub or a little tiny margarine tub, whatever, you, whatever you've got to hand, or a little tiny magnet tray or something. There's one here to do. There goes a light. As working in confined spaces is, is quite tricky to do at the best of times when you're trying to, when you're trying to get stuff to work. You're always, you're always going to knock stuff. That's, that's always going to happen. Got to change my light battery. There's one right down the bottom here. As I said earlier, it's a bit of a tricky one to get hold of. You could do with a shorter socket, to be fair. It's loosened him up. Do it by hand. Once you've got it loosened up, you can just run it by hand with a socket on it. That's that one. So we've removed uh, one, two, three, four. And now we've got um, some of the other side to do as well. Let me get them done. So it should just be one more, I think. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one more to do. So six in total. Number six is going to be right down here in the depths, just by that red cable. Let me get my socket on there and we'll get rolling then. There it is. As I say, once you've got it moving, you can just run it with a socket by hand. That is there. Right. So that's the, um, the four screws out of the glove box and the six screws off the actual motor itself. So now what you want to do is up inside here, let me grab a torch, you can see what's going on. Right, up inside here, you can see where that red wire goes. Let me just get my screwdriver so I can show you. Up inside here, you'll see there's a little tiny red wire coming down off the motor and onto this little tiny white housing just here. That's your resistor. And just by popping that up, there's a little tiny clip on there, but you can just bypass it like so. There you go, there's your resistor. All you've got to do is then just pull that resistor up and out and then remove, uh, there's a red wire and a black wire on there and a little tiny universal plug here which you need to take out a little tiny plastic clip which looks like that, okay? Now that just comes out with a pair of long nose pliers. So disconnect your resistor and just retrieve that and I should do that right now. I should show what it looks like once I've retrieved it. Right, so here's your resistor. I've just removed it from the actual um, housing itself. And as you can see, you've got a, uh, a red plug, a black plug, and uh, a normal wire there as well, okay? So just make sure you, you can check the orientation. You know which way around it's supposed to go. So you wanna take a quick little photograph of that so you can see exactly how it sits and how it all goes. Um, do that for your own records. I should do the same. And then just pull that red wire out and that black wire out and remove that plug. And then we should move on to the next step. Right, just for reference sake, um, as you can see, here's that little tiny plastic clip I told you about. And on this plug here, you'll see that there is two holes to the right and one hole to the left. And that little tiny plug, all it does, a little tiny strap, it just sits in there. You try and put it in one-handed, like so. And that's, that's, that's what keeps it in. So just pull that out with a little, little pair of uh, flat nose pliers or a flat nose screwdriver or something. Just pull that out. It'll come straight out with ease. Once you've got a hold of it, you can take it straight out. 
like so. And I don't lose that because you'll put that back in once, once we reinstall. So with that done, we've now got the resistor out. And now this resistor is about 20 quid, 28 pound on eBay. Um, and looking at, looking at the condition of it, it's been in there for a little while and that's all terminals inside all rusty. So I'm going to replace it anyway. Uh, for 20 quid, it ain't worth a hassle. We've taken it out anyway to, to see if you can get the motor to run. So I should be replacing this if the motor is no good as well. Okay, but uh, either way, um, we're now in a situation where now the, the actual motor itself now, come, now comes away. It's now dropped down out of, the, uh, out of its housing. Now, some people say you've got to remove um, this bottom shelf of the, of the glove box to do this, but uh, I disagree. Not to say it's right or wrong, but you know, I just disagree. And disagreeing is, is one good thing, one thing I'm good at. So let me just put the camera up. It is sorted out. That's it, somewhere there. This camera's gonna fall over if I ain't careful. I've got it on a, on a small tripod, which is uh, probably not, not the best tool at the moment, but uh, it's uh, it's working. So we'll, uh, we'll, go, we'll go with it. So, right. Now to remove this um, this heater blower, it's just, a, it's just a little bit of jiggly pokery, literally. All these wires are all now loose. If you just literally bring it over to one side, it just comes straight out. There you go. So you haven't got to remove this part of it, this bottom shelf to do it, okay? There inside is your all your uh, heater blower housing. Just make sure you haven't caught no wires whilst you've been mucking about in here. But there's the actual motor, and now we're gonna bench test this motor to see um, if it's any good or not. So let me get a bit of wiring, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, quick slurp with the old, uh, the old coffee. Very nice and deedly doodly. Right, to bench test your motor, there's your motor there. As you can see, this mo motor is actually free to turn. Nine times out of 10, these are actually seized, okay? Um, you can rebuild them to a certain degree, you can clean them, but these are 38 pound for a brand new uh, motor. It's not worth it, not worth the aggro. All you wanna do now is get two pieces of, uh, of normal standard household cable, and you wanna connect one to the black and one to the red. Let me do it now, and I'll come back. Okay, so I've got a collection now. I've now got my red and red and the brown, which is my live, and my black and my blue, which is me my neutral. I'm now gonna grab the motor and go around the other side of the wagon. Right, let's just put the old motor on the deck for a minute. I'm gonna try and pop pop the bonnet. Got dogs barking, next door neighbour's dogs, lovely. Right, let's lift the old bonnet up. Right, to bench test your motor, um, to see if it's actually working or not, it's, uh, it's quite easy to do. So just get your, get your motor, put it up somewhere, get your two wires, make sure they're not touching or shorting each other out, and simply just put your, your brown wire, which is my, my live, neutral wire onto the battery, and all we're gonna do is, is, is we're bypassing the resistor. That's all we're doing. So make sure it's not touching nowhere. And that motor should spin if the motor's any good. So onto the negative, a bit of a clean up. Onto the positive. As you can see, nothing at all. So that motor is actually, despite the fact it's actually free to run, it's actually no good. Okay. So next, in the next clip, I should get the new motor in and uh, we'll also get a new resistor as well. Uh, we'll bench test it as well, make sure it's okay. And then we'll go to fit it. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. Right, so a couple of days later and the package has just this second arrived in the box. New motor and looks like a new resistor as well, which is what I ordered too. So that's just come. Let me get the bonnet up. I'm just gonna test this motor on the battery, make sure it spins to confirm the motor is good and that the old one's broken. And then uh, we go from there. Right, so now we've got the, the new motor uh, mounted just, just in here, so it don't shoot off in here, because it, it, it will spin quite violently if it works. Just gonna, just gonna pulse it, that's all. So, exactly the same wire and harness as before, just wired into the, the direct of the motor, onto the negative, onto the positive, just a quick pulse. There you go, that motor's good. So we know that motor runs. So when you go to test your old motor, if it don't spin when you hardwire it, then that's definitely your motor is a problem and not your resistor. 
but for the sake of a resistor, it's about 20 quid. I'm just gonna um, replace mine anyway. And uh, it does weigh the whole fault going forward. And you know you've got brand new bits of equipment. So that's cool. Let's get the fixing. Right, so I've got you about as close as I can get you without hitting the camera, but I may have to move the camera uh, to coincide. So now I've got to the new resistor, that's just come, and it's already in better condition than my old one anyway. And all we've got to do is plug the, uh, the five prong plug up into this little tiny block just here. And if you remember rightly, it goes green side nearest um, the passenger side, which is the longer leg. Okay, so green side in first. So let me just move this plug into place. Try not to knock you guys, because it is a bit it is a bit restricted in here. So literally, all we're gonna do is bring that down, push that into place, bump. Let me just grab that little tiny uh, clip I told you guys about, which is gonna be yeah. There's a little tiny clip just here, remember a little plastic clip I was on about? And as I said to you, there's two holes on the far side and one hole on the near side. And all we want to do, literally, is just find the holes. I can't see a great deal. I am sort of working a bit blind here. Let's have a little look. And there is now fitted that little tiny gray plug I was on about as well. Do you remember that? I had to fit a little tiny gray plug in there as well. So that's now gone in as well. That's that bit done. Let me just move my microphone up a touch to try to rub on the old body. Just want to double check my photographs on my phone to make sure we have the um, the right wiring in the right direction. Just going to check my phone very quick. I took a quick photograph of uh, which way the wiring goes round. There it is there, and it is the red goes nearest to me with the motor, okay? So what I'm gonna do is before I put that in place, I'm gonna bring the motor in. So I'm gonna bring you guys back a touch, just so you can sort of see what's going on. Let's bring it to about, to about there, if I can get you just to stay put. Just gonna slide the motor into place. It's not the easiest, but it, it, it is achievable. You might have to pick this little housing up ever so slightly just to slide it in without damaging it. There it goes. So the red wire is closest and the black is furthest away on the resistor itself. So we we'll put the black in first, which is the furthest nearest to the front of the vehicle. And it goes sideways on or long ways on. going to be it's a bit fiddly there's a the black wire gone in and the red wire goes long ways as well and there's a red wire let me bring it back in so you can see that so there is now the red wire and the black wire now in position and all we've got to do now with that resistor is put it up into its housing right up the top. Now, I'm not gonna be able to do that with you showing you guys, I don't think, because it goes right up in the depths. But you know where it went beforehand. Let me just get it fitted and I'll show you where it sits. Okay, and there's the resistor in its little home just so you can see the red and the black wire uh, up the top end. Uh, so you can see that that's all now into place. So now it's all left to do, literally, is to push the motor up into its housing, which is simply done just by lifting it up, plonking it into place, and it, all of a sudden it will just go pomp and it'll sit there. Once you've got it roughly in place, where it needs to sit, which is gonna be about there, you can get your five or six screws, the silver ones, and just start just to nip them up nice and gently. So let me get a few in place, and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, so that's the new motor now in place. All six bolts now have been put in, uh, two down the bottom and four around the outside front skirts. Don't forget to put your wire in where it needs to be. That wire's going to be clipped out the way so it doesn't catch anywhere. It's going to be something like that. That's a bit better. So now what's left to do is to put the, the glove box back in. Now, I'm quietly confident this is going to work. 
hence the reason why I'm not going to go straight to testing it because the motor did work on the um, on the battery. Don't forget when you reinstall this, you've got this little tiny plug just here, which is your glove box plug for the light in your glove box. So let's just hook that up now. Put that into there. Ooh. It'll only go on that. It'll go on one of each one of each other way, it makes no odds. And when you start it back, just make sure your cables aren't getting pinched. In it goes, open the glove box up and your light's back on now, so that's all good. Then get your Torx bits, which would be your black, your little black screws we had. Uh, we had, what do we have then, four of those, was it? There's four of those, and they go at either side of the corners of the glove box. And that holds your glove box in place. And one just down here, wasn't it, I think? Might by the camera. Hopefully I don't knock you guys over. Not very easy to see. Can't see. There it goes. So now I have a glove box in place. I have that's my glove box. A glove box needs a bit of a bit of a, a free up because it doesn't quite come on catch as fast as it should do. So I need to spray out a bit of gunk in there. But glove box now works. And what have you. So now let's do a live test. Oh. Uh, I don't know where my keys are. Keys might be in ignition on my pocket, one or the other. In my pocket. Let's go around. Oh, nice to work on something other than a, than a lawnmower. You know, something more than just one cylinder. Right. Um, let's turn your girl on. Let the old glow plug heat up. As you can see, I've got no faults on my, on my vehicle at all. She's uh, completely fault free. Up she goes, engine management light will go off. Yeah, no faults on the vehicle at all, just been serviced, so that's good. Um, right, so now we're after the heater to kick in and work as it should do, because beforehand it didn't. I've got a few things going beep because me, my door's all open. Let me just turn them beeps off. I might not, not like the bonnet and the boot as well. Um, right, so uh, onto, onto the windscreen which is gonna be that one there. And it did nothing beforehand. Is that working or not? That's on number one. Yeah, I can feel, oh yeah, I can feel something coming through. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. So now we've got, not only got heat, we've also got cold air as well now, it's absolutely lovely. It's a hot air I'm after. This, this vehicle hasn't got air con. It's a hot air I'm after, just to clear the windscreen when I finish work and what have you. But now, it works in all four positions, exactly as it should do. Yeah, baby, well happy. Right, there you go, quick, easy, and simple, and that is how you do it. Um, I've done one before on my, as I say, on my wife's Citroen Grand C4 Picasso, um, and I've replaced the resistor on that as well, or people call it a resistor, because it does have some resistance towards the motor, but some people do call it other stuff. But uh, I've had that car now for about five years, it hasn't really played up at all, and the heating did pack up, or the blower packed up just the other week, coming back from uh, Mr. Martin Butler's house uh, the other week and it was red hot as I say. So all you've got to do is take the old motor out, bench test it like I showed you. If it doesn't run, then it's just your motor. If it does run, it, there is a high possibility it could be a resistor, but for the cost of it, the motor itself was 34 pound uh, with free postage and the resistor was about 22 pound free postage as well. So you're talking 50 notes, 50 quid and about an hour of your labor just to get the, uh, the motor out, get it tested, get the new one in with a new resistor. It's just a bit fiddly. I've got hands like 10 pound of pork sausages. If you've got little Rider Boys hands in there, you have done inside 10 minutes. Um, but a very simple test and very, very effective. And within, within an hour, you're up and running again and you're, you've got heating and you've got cold and hot air, all that sort of lovely stuff. So it is quick and easy. One of the main uh, contributory factors to these actually fading is the little tiny water shoots um, in your bulkhead. When it rains, they get uh, blocked up with uh, leaf lift and what have you. And what happens is, is they get blocked up and the water then runs down into your heater motor and that is, or your, your heater blower, and that's when a bearing then seizes up. But there's no evidence of that in mine at all. I think it is just wear and tear and age itself. So all, to, all in all, I'm very, very happy. If you enjoyed this little video of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. 
a quick and simple, very cost-effective fix for you. I hope you did enjoy it. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.